Aloha, and welcome back to Politics and Land in Hawaii with Dennis Isaki on Think Back Hawaii. Today, we'll be speaking with Cherie Raposo, a Kama'aina real estate agent. When I say Kama'aina, I don't mean just anybody who lives in Hawaii. She's a child of the land and lives it. Besides helping others with real estate and housing, Cherie has worked for the county prosecutor's office in the hotel industry, uh, started a trucking company, and her passion includes the extreme hiking, hula, canoe paddling, martial arts. I understand she's a second degree black belt in karate, so <laughs> I'll try not to try not to get her mad and you know, at me. Sheree, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, Dennis. Hello. Please tell us a little bit about your background on Kauai and your passions. Um, my background in Hawaii is I'm um, a fifth generation to the island. My grandparents, um, you know, some came here from, one came from Portugal, which was my grandma. And they all came to the sugarcane industry to work here. My grandfather grew up in Kilauea area. And he relocated to Makawele, which is also known as Pakala. And he was pretty much up there as a superintendent for the sugarcane industry. So a lot of my time was playing in red dirt in Pakala. Um, I am a single mom, I have two kids, um, two grown girls. Um, one is probably not going to come back home because the cost of living is just crazy here. My daughter, my oldest daughter is back home with two of my grandchildren. And she's also considering relocating too because just cost of living here is just not economical for her to be here already. Yeah. Well, I forgot to mention you're a, a horseback rider too, right? On the road. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it appears that you, you go all out in whatever you do, which leads to getting frustrated sometimes when you see things that could be done better. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, starting with, starting with politics and government, uh, on a scale of one to 10, I'll put you on a spot. How, okay. satis how satisfied are you and why? With politics on our island or yeah. in general? Yeah. Or uh, politics and government in Kauai and Hawaii. On Kauai, I'm very disappointed. Um, scale of one to 10, I rate Kauai probably a three. And in the state, probably rate them probably a three, two. It's um, a lot of, lot of too many politics, a lot of talk. Nobody wants to do the dirty work. Okay, uh, well, a lot, lot has to do, you know, you're a real estate agent mm -hmm. and you deal with trying to help people with housing. They talk about affordable housing is just a word, you know, affordable because mm -hmm. they categorize it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Like you mentioned, uh, for the kids that come back and stay here. Um, you know, when Every every two years, we hear the same thing from the council, affordable housing. What is affordable? There's no criteria. I mean, most people that live here are with their income, they actually qualify for HUD. And HUD is like a offset for to use for rentals. Um, the criteria that we have in Hawaii is very different from the other parts of the state because we pay to live in paradise. People are coming here and not coming to visit anymore. They're coming here to relocate. That has to taken a turn during COVID on, on housing. Not only it creates a housing shortage for buyers, but it's creating a shortage on rentals right now on the island. Um, there is a severe rental shortage on the island. I mean, weekly I get phone calls, people looking for rent. And it's just going to get worse. Um, I mean, people want to live here. This is paradise. You know, they come here, they want to move here. And because a lot of people can do work, you know, online now, a lot of people are closing up their offices and having their workers work on online. 
and they're saving a lot of money, you know, paying commercial space. So um, we see a lot of change here and it's affecting our island. Our growth has changed dramatically and we are not prepared for what's gonna be happening. Our infrastructures here on the island are, we're so far behind, way, way behind. Traffic is just getting worse and it's just gonna get worse and worse. Kapa'a is deadlock. We see the west side traffic coming into Lihui, same thing. And it's just gonna get worse. There Are there any talks of ro you know, road improvements? I didn't, I didn't hear anything about new roads, nothing. You know, it's just peacemaking stuff, piecemealing stuff to just get, you know, high-end developments have, have been happening on the island. You see the infrastructure is being put in for that, but for regular housing around the island, there's not there's nothing on the books right now going on besides Habitat is going to be start building like 37 homes in Waimea, and that's it, you know, and you have... Um, Ele Nani still doing the next phases in Ele Ele. Um, sorry, not Ele Ele Nani, but across Ele Ele Nani. They're doing that phase coming up, but you know, where else? You know, Hawaiian homes are trying to go back and forth, trying to get through their list. Um, they have a lot of monies to start, you know, developing areas to get to the list because a lot of people that has been on a Hawaiian home list are. Are, are passing away and it's all you know there's politics controlling this you know this whole um avenue on how to go about you know developing this area how to go about getting electrical and water lines and you know is it going to happen in our lifetime um chances are the ad lots no there's you know for hawaiian homes lands i don't see anything happening in the next 10 years they might have some house lots up in Hanapepe and Amahola, but you know, it's we're we're very behind. And I blame our political leaders for where we are today. And you know, you see that you see the same people running for politics. They can do their whole term while they were there for 10 years. Did they fix anything? No. And then now you see them go, want to go back again. You got the same people going back in, but the people are voting for the same people. So what do you do? Same thing over and over and over. <laughs> okay, getting back, getting back to uh, uh, housing and uh, affordability and availability. It was a mm -hmm. recent study came out. I guess, I guess uh, must be a mainland group. They said you know you cannot blame the the mainland people, outside people, for the housing. I think they they still has a large percentage or. You know, maybe not majority, but I think they're still uh, impacting the availability availability of housing here. Correct. Think, yeah. Yes, I yeah. I feel that yeah, it's um, as a realtor, I have sold houses to people during COVID during the shutdown, sight unseen, cash, yeah. cash, and yeah. um, you know, and is can the can a local person that has been living here for decades compete against these people? No, they drop it on cash. So affordability, that's out the door. I mean, realistically, a, a condo right now, which, you know, Halilani used to be like 250, maybe at the most 300,000. Now they're in the 500,000 bracket. And that is pretty much where most local people can qualify for a loan is pretty much in the 550, 650 range. That's the normal. And are we going to see more housing in that price range? Very, very slim, very slim. And if there are, if you have a house for 650, you'll probably have like 30 plus offers, like in, you know, in, in a day on that same house. So we, we do have an issue, you know, and if we think we're going to wait for the market to crash, good luck, because everybody wants to be here living on the island. They want to come to Kauai. You know, everybody's looking for a good deal. There's no such thing as a good deal. You pay it to live in paradise. Yeah. And on, you know, on the mainland, the prices uh, of housing, maybe you get 300 something thousand, you can get a decent home, not in a home here. Um, no. Yeah. 
you can even buy a vacant piece of property for on you know under three hundred thousand, you know. And you know, my children is a good example. They have a vacant piece of land, but to construct a home here, you're looking at you know on the low ends like three fifty four hundred dollars a square foot for to build your house, even yeah. though you have the land. Then you have to put in your own septic system, yeah. you know. So very costly for so affordability on this island. Uh, I think that's a term that is just been stretched out and used in every yeah. political campaign. Affordability, affordability, it's 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 gone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's it's a misnomer. You know, it's it's just mm -hmm. a word that you know doesn't mean yeah. what it says. No, it's no. Yeah, you talk. You touched upon the infrastructure, the septic tank for for one. Yeah, you're gonna start off. You know, most of the island don't have a sewer system, so you gotta build your own septic tanks, right? Right. Septic system costs about thirty grand or something right off the bat. Um, it's and, over that right now. Uh, yeah. On, yep, and you know, septic design is like two thousand plus. And you know, and right now a septic system in Kekaha, yeah. in Kekaha now it's you don't have to dynamite or and it's yeah. pretty much sand. Yeah. It's thirty six thousand dollars in Kekaha. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, it's a big thing already. And then you gotta uh, if you wanna if you need a water meter facility to reserve charge of fourteen thousand, mm -hmm. it adds up. And you know, just yeah. to get just to get started, so. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, a lot of those things come under the county. Um, so yeah, and, the, the, and you know, waste, yeah, and then wastewater is you know falls underneath underneath the state, and the state, you know, the the conversion is in the year two thousand and fifty. Um, and people that are in cesspools right now are pretty much stuck. If you want to add on to your home, if you want to add an additional dwelling unit to your home to you know, help with your children yeah. that, to build a second house. You have to take that cesspool and you have to abandon it and you have to put in a septic system. So, you know, you're looking at costs right there to even have an additional dwelling yeah. unit on your home even, you know, so yeah. it's just a bunch of money it takes to get to that level to help our children to stay here on the island to add, add onto our home and it's everything's cost and the cost of material on our island went up like 40 percent more freight went up everything went up you know and it's just going to get worse for us to live here on the island you know most people work two jobs you know and they still living at home trying to save money and there's nothing on the books for new affordable housing yeah, right also, it's it, we just gonna get overrun by people with a lot of money, you know. And there's a lot of change. You go down to Poi Pu. You 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 can't build a home in Poi Pu. You know, you're competing with Kukuyula Development. You know, and you know, you houses there sell for eight million and up. You know, and that was once ag lands, yeah. ag lands, and these ag lands was turned into resort areas. High end homes, resorts. Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, I have, I said, we have ag property. I can build a second home on my ag property because you're not allowed to build an additional dwelling unit on, on, on a piece of, piece of ag property. But you can do a gas house, which is right. 500 square feet. Yeah. What can 500 square feet do for a family? Yeah. Of yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. yeah good. Getting back to, uh, I just want to clarify myself on the septic. Um, the sewer systems come on account, but the septic uh, approvals and stuff come from the state, you're correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we need more uh, sewer si county sewer systems. Correct. Because you know? a, so, uh, a lot of areas uh, outside the island is in the, like along the shorelines, Kekaha, for example. Mm -hmm. Kekaha, so yeah, so you know, I'm glad you brought that up. So in the state of Hawaii did a study back in 2017 and they had prioritized the areas where they need to address the cesspool systems. 
and Kekaha, which is lowland area, flood zone area, close to the beaches, there's ditch lines, there's runoffs that goes into the ocean. It was not even on the 2017 report with the Department of Health that was a priority item. I, I, I raised concerns on that. I did contact the agency. And of course, you know, they pay for these high tax reports and was questioning why Kekaha was not on this list of priority. Well, just to happen, <laughs> this new report was just recently redone in 2021. And um, it addresses, uh, there is, they changed the whole priority system on the island and Kekaha is in the red, it's in the red area. Um, and it is in a significant risk of, you know, human impact of drinking water and drainage. It is a, it's probably the, the top of the list, which is Kekaha, Hanale, and um, parts of Wailua. So this report was done in 2021. However, there was a bill that the county passed um, last year, um, Bill 2873, which is a successful conversion law. And this report was not part of that bill because they used the 2017 um, report that the state put out. However, I think our county needs to revisit this bill 2873 to look at the report that was the state of Hawaii has that was done on August 2021 to indicate the three priority areas which has Kekaha on it, which Kekaha should have been on this report from day one. So this needs to be addressed immediately because now we have a, a landfill that's almost capacity. It's gonna reach capacity 2027 and the target area right now, again, is gonna be in Kekaha backyard, you know? And so now we're gonna deal with a sewer issue and now we're gonna deal with a landfill issue. So I think money should be appropriated for septic for Kekaha, or they should have this money that they give the Kekaha host community host host the landfill in the backyard. They should utilize funds from, you know, this funds should be put into uh, a sewer system for Kekaha and have them tied in, even they can be tied into the Waimea sewer treatment, um, treatment center. Because from you know, talking to people in the field of, you know, wastewater, Waimea sewer system has the capacity to handle the whole Kekaha. To do, to do tie-ins for sewer from Kekaha to Waimea shouldn't be, shouldn't be crazily high because the ground is soft. You have a lot of sand. You're not dynamiting. You don't have, you know, bedrock like in Koloa area. So is this in the works? Nope. They just nothing. Kika just you know left behind. They want to put the landfill, the toxins putting the landfill across the road from the existing one, and you know they're not even addressing the sewer issue in Kekaha. Nothing. We're not even on the list, and yeah, that upsets me because on the west side of the island is just just like push it that way, push it that way. Because who wants a landfill in the backyard? You know nobody. So they keep on giving Kekaha community they, to host the landfill in their backyard. They give monies, but that's wrong. They need to address that we have an issue and the issue shouldn't be putting a landfill again in Kekaha that is close to our oceans, you know, water sources. And now we're gonna be dealing with a, you know, sexual issue that's not even on the books to upgrade help the community to upgrade to either septic systems or connect to a sewer and get the sewer lines in and utilize the, the capacity of Waimea Treatment Center to, you know, to upgrade people for wastewater. And, you know, then people can build for the children on the same lot. You know, that can be like, I mean, it's not gonna happen overnight, but it should be talked about, you know, not put on the back burner. Yeah, um, 
the landfill is a, a big issue that, that we got to deal with that right away. You know, going back to the septic, mm -hmm. uh, the county had a $1.2 million. That won't go very far. They said they're going to help people pay for their septic system, maybe 30 something units. And they, Kikaha wasn't prioritized. No, it was not prioritized. So, I mean, I'm going to, um, you know, there was a councilman that, you know, did push through this bill and, and he followed, you know, the 2017 report from the state of Hawaii. However, it needs to be readdressed, you know, Kekaha, Hanale, and um, persons of Wailua, they need to be prioritized in, in this new bill. And that 1.2 million that they're going to be having, you know, it should be an annual flow from the clean water um, state revolving fund. It's, and it's a forgiveness loan. So you can apply for it every year and get it. So, they, you know, they should not be only considering these funds for, you know, certain areas that this report covers. If they're going to put a landfill again, so smacking Kekaha, they need to address the the sewer system immediately. This is this is critical. You know, it's like don't just dump something on the west side of the island without you know revisiting this bill. It should address the west side of the island. You know, and Hanalei has you know should be prioritized too because they're like straight there. They have river, water source, ocean. You know, so I think a lot of these monies. I think the report. You know, when you see K um, Koloa. And this, you know, high end home uh, yeah. on this list, that doesn't sit well with me. Most of some of these are vacation rentals too. You know, it should go for the Kamaaina of the island. You know, it should, the money should be here and utilized where, you know, it it's really needed. You know, Kekaha, I think there's 1,200 cesspools right now there, and they're not priority. You know, they're not a priority right now. It should be a priority, and. You know, and I think the state, our state representation on the island, even though this is a county issue, you know, the standpoint comes from the state implementing 2050, you know, that the conversion has to happen. So county and state needs to work together on getting this, you know, resolution on, on this issue. It, it is an issue for any future development. Okay, we only get a few minutes left. Um, uh, well, uh, Kaloa area is in a, they got a private uh, sewer system in a, in a way um, with, with all the price of houses going up, it affects the real property tax assessments and, you know, how much we all pay. Uh, mm -hmm. Got anything to say about that assessments? Our property assessments on the island, they're all over the place. And speaking as a realtor here, um, I can, you know, look up, you know, prices on assessment and for sale, what they're selling for and what the assessment values, they're way off. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not picking on a, 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 an assessor, but I think the county, um, seriously should take a look at the department and probably get more assessors, hire more assessors, because your monies will come to the island from the property taxes. So... I can look up, like, I can look at it any given day. I can put up, you know, I'll look at, you know, data from 2018 prior all up to now. You know, home sell for $5 million, $8 million, resell for $10 million. However, their assessment value is still at $2 million. Why? You know, why is it still $2 million? A lot of the errors are not being corrected on the island. You know, I did, you know, address the issue with the county before. You know, I gave them some data. And of course, you know, they have their high tech software system, which I think it, it's failing. It's not right, you know, and certain assessors, they do go into the neighborhoods and they do look at the areas. But I think they're so short handed, short staff that if the county would put more monies in hiring assessors on the island and really getting the true values of what people are paying for and being assessed properly, I think that can generate a lot of property taxes, revenue back into Hawaii. And that can be used for the wastewater systems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> well, darn, it's, it's, it's almost uh, 
the end of our time. We're running out. Um, any last words? Um, yes. I, you know, for our future to remain here on the island, our po political leaders seriously needs to look at infrastructures and without having our infrastructures in with roadways, our sewer systems, you know, utilities, we're not gonna see any growth for our Kama'aina to remain here on the island. It, it'll just be for the rich to be here, you know, and to utilize, you know, their, our, our whatever we're providing them with roads and such, but our children are not gonna be able to stay here unless we start, you know, being aggressive and, you know, looking at, you know, solutions to what we have and what we face. And without having the solutions in place, you know, we're gonna see more and more of our children relocating off the island, not being able to live on Kauai, you know, because of the frustrations of not being able to build because of all of these loopholes that you can't build because of this. You know, and wastewater would be the top priority on, on everybody's list right now. And the landfill, nobody wants a landfill in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, so. And, anyway. and, and, and the word, what is that phrase? Sight unseen. Huh? Yeah. Um, sight, yeah. unseen. <laughs> sight unseen. Yeah. I have a lot of sight unseen, but yeah, yeah. You know, anyway, but I think, you know, I think our political leaders need to, you know, put the game face on and this is, needs to be addressed can be passed on to the next the next couple of years okay. it has to be done okay yeah we're running out of time okay uh, thank, thank you thank you sheree okay uh, go to our wonderful guest sheree raposo mahalo to our viewers on think tech hawaii if you like the think tech free media shows please help support this nonprofit platform aloha ahoi ho malama pono Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.